oopsie. Oh, oh man. I just dumped it on my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. So ragdolls are probably some of the most infamous toys of all time whether you like them or not. With dolls like Raggedy Ann being associated with some not so friendly spirits or maybe the fact that her and her brother Andy have a timeless book series I've never read. Or you could be like me where neither of those things really come to mind with the term because to me there is just nothing more timeless than Lala Loopsy. Lala Loopsy is a doll line that was created by MGA Entertainment who is responsible for other lines like Noby Stars and more notably Bratz. The concept of Lala Loopsy was essentially rag dolls come to life, the you know non Annabelle type of way of course. Specifically when their last stitch is actually sewn. <laughs> Each doll basically has a fictional theme to reflect the day they were created and the fabric they were sewn from. Now MGA went on to announce the launch of Lala Loopsy in July of 2010, or formerly known as Bitty Buttons, but it was shortly changed after the release, ultimately keeping the same, you know, iconic tagline though, so magical, so cute. According to company press releases, the dolls were quote unquote designed to encourage a child's imagination and creativity. Isaac Laring, um, CEO of MGA Entertainment, also said that Bitty Buttons was designed to teach kids that everyone is unique in their own special way. They truly wanted to promote the idea that old things can become new again with this line and that, you know, everything can be repurposed and nothing should ever go to waste. It's on that note that I want to take a second to acknowledge um, that I quoted Isaac to help give a better understanding of the company and the doll's early concept to those who aren't familiar or, you know, need a refresher. But ironically, he's literally a racist and I won't be mentioning him again in this video. I say ironically because this line really started on such a positive note with little girls having dolls like Mittens Fluff and stuff who's a medium toned doll um, who could be more appealing to a larger audience of girls in that way. So shortly after the release of these dolls, they almost immediately flourished with the launch garnering quite, you know, the popularity amongst the holiday season, with even CBS's The Early Show describing them as the Tickle Me Elmo of the 2010s, which definitely adds up considering the dolls, like, sold out in most toy stores among Black Friday sales, and according to the New York Post, began retailing for as much as $89 online. Now why did I mention Mittens earlier? Well, can you guess who the doll was that specifically caused all this chaos and that everyone was searching for? That launched this line into possibly its peak popularity, it's none other than Mittens Fluff and Stuff. On the topic of skin tone range, a huge example of why I'm bringing this up is another doll, Dot Starlight, who was also and still remains to be the Lala Loopsy with the dark skin complexion was unfortunately not popular in merchandise and thus far is the most elusive character in any line. Like out of all the other characters in her series, she is the only one to not have a designated little sibling doll, soft doll, and or a silly hair loopy doll, as well as having no additional mini other than her original. And of course we can't forget that dolls like Feather Telltale exist, along with the fact that Mitten's origin story um, actually said this for the longest. Now this of course doesn't mean, you know, you can't enjoy the Lollipsy franchise and, you know, have nostalgia for it, but it does, you know, need to be acknowledged because these things shouldn't be swept under the rug. As for Yuki Komodo, um, I've seen honestly a lot of praise for her online among fans. Obviously it's not something I'm going to be personally speaking on, but if you were Japanese, I would love to hear your perspective on it in the comments because it seemed very torn from what I could find. But now with over 180 characters in their universe, two TV shows, and even multiple video games, let's take a look at the modernized take on such a classic concept that truly took the world by storm. Get on the other side. But instead sparkles too, we wanna be la 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 by you. We're la la Lucy. We're la la Lucy. Made with magic and love. Now just to clarify, this video is going to be breaking it down by year by year and it's going to be really focused on just the toys. Originally the media was going to be in this video too, but it just was kind of a lot and I think it deserves its own video to make sure that I really do it justice. The year is 2011 and we have our original eight dolls hitting store shelves. Well they really hit store shelves um, among Black Friday and all that, but I am putting them in the 2011 section of this video because I was not going to do like the shortest section ever on just the original dolls. The eight original dolls include Crumbs Sugar Cookie, Jewel Sparkles, Peanut Big Top, 
bees spells a lot, mittens fluff and stuff, dots starlight, pillow feather bed, and spot splatter splash. Each doll came in a box that was shaped like a house, that came with a poster, their own pet, a tag attachment, and a handle, which I believe was similar to Novi Stars, where you could turn it into a hairband, but I honestly couldn't confirm it. Because shockingly, this video was actually very hard to research. Um, for such a popularized doll line, there wasn't quite a lot of detailed information online, but the designs did vary for future dolls as this franchise grew, eventually adding cardboard roofs to the boxes and turning the insert backgrounds into more of a room you could save for your doll to play with instead of the background just showing the dolls in front of the house that was, you know, previously. Early into 2011, we also saw the additions of three more characters. These included Patch Treasure Test, Blossom Flower Pot, and Tippy Tumbelina, which were added to the existing line of eight. And we can't forget the Toys R Us exclusive two pack with characters Sunny Side Up and Barry's Jars and Jam. Something really iconic about this line is they really expanded upon just the regular standard dolls they had. And the first addition we saw to this was our very first spin off line, if you'll call it that, of the big dolls, which was Mini Lalaloopsy, which are basically miniature versions of the Lalaloopsy characters that are around the size of Littlest Pet Shops, I would say. They're sold in these little packages shaped like houses, which could actually pop out and be used as a house for your little toys. They each came with accessories complementing their personalities and interests, and many of the characters also came with several versions, you know, called it like they would be like special editions. Not all minis are sorted by series and can only be acquired through special vehicle or playset merchandise. Their outfits would usually vary and tend to be recolors of each other sometimes, and their pets are often colored differently as well. At the beginning of the year, um, when I started the script for this video, initially I was lucky enough to score this inbox set of two minis for only $5.49 at the thrift store. I don't know what year this set is from. I, you know, looked online. I'm leaning towards obviously that they are one of the older sets that have like a pop out playset. Anyway, because I knew this video would be coming at some point this year. Yes, the script took that long. I saved it to unbox for you guys, but since we're this early into telling the story, I'm gonna put it at the very end of this video, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. Anyway, because this line was very new and the popularity was skyrocketing, probably, it was probably at its peak in 2011 if we're being serious. Um, we really saw the addition of more new characters this year, more than ever in general. Starting with the spring line, we have dolls like Misty Mysterious, Sahara Marriage, and Marina Anchors. Then, in the summer, we saw releases of Pepper Pots and Pans, Ace Fender Bender, Peppy Pom Poms, and Swirly Figure 8. And then finally, in the fall and winter, there were Rosie Bumps and Bruises, Ember Flicker Flame, Prairie Dusty Trails, and Pixie Flutters. A lot of Loopsy went on to do this as they continued to release dolls in the future, where they did season releases. Sometimes they would be themed to the seasons, other times it would kind of be like random, but to add new characters, that's how they did their rollouts usually. This year we also saw the debut of um, the Littles line, which were, as the name says, littler versions of the Lalas and like their little sisters to be exact in the canon. So the four characters they launched for this release included Bundles, the younger sister of Mittens Fluff and Stuff, Specs, the younger sister of B Spells a Lot, Sprinkle, the younger sister of Crumb Sugar Cookie, and Squirt, the little sister of Peanut Big Top. Overall, the Littles line ended up accumulating almost 40 characters, or 40 little sisters of the original characters, should I say. We also saw the first of the Silly Hair Dolls. <laughs> I think deserves its own segment because they are literally the walkables of Lala Loopsy. No Steel waddles past. Walk, walk, New walkables from Lala's Pet Shop. Silly hair dolls are basically the regular big dolls, but with a twist. It's the Lala Loopsy characters you know and love with longer, more silly hair in their words, not mine, that you can style. They come with many accessories to help you achieve this and decorate their hair or whatever. Um, even with their pets having long silly parts that can be styled as well. Their outfits are also completely different from what they would normally wear. So these are like a specialty doll. If we were doing a tier list here, these would definitely be F tier and I think a lot of people can relate. I've never had one, but I've seen my fair share of them at the thrift store and I'm not the only one who thinks this way because after 2013, these were ultimately discontinued. But unfortunately, they did get brought back in 2021 with the OG dolls for their 10th anniversary. Although I say unfortunately, 
finally at this part of the video i did want to highlight that the um silly hair dolls from 2021 are actually like such an upgrade compared to the ones i just showed like for example scoop's waffle cone the whole concept of this doll absolutely everything and i think the silly hair concept fits well with her. Another thing that released this year that's more on the obscure side, being it didn't last very long, are the La Loopsie button tails. These are essentially the little plushies of the two La Loopsie pets, Cookie Crumbs Mouse and Jewel Sparkles Cat. The gimmick with these though is you can switch out their ears, eyes, tails with new ones, like mix and match type of situation. Her arms were cut off. Her legs were cut off. Her ears were cut off. And you can also add accessories with each pet, including about 14 button pieces overall. But at an end of an ad, I watched for these in preparation for the research I was doing. Um, the La Loopsie game was advertised. You'll have so much fun changing their looks again and again. For even more fun, go to lalaloopsie.com to explore the 3D world of Lala Loopsie Land. Check out your favorite character's house and play cool games. But why I bring that up is because I'm assuming these pets are made in some kind of promotion for that, but the ad doesn't really specify a specific code or anything, so I can't be for sure. I'm making this assumption based on how the plushies kind of remind me of something like LPS Online. But moving on, similarly to the mini Lala's, we saw an even smaller set with the micro minis, which came in little blind bags each come with a folded up sheet and a sticker with a small heart with a number on it basically the idea was you could use the hearts to mark on the sheet and determine like which micros you have or like you still need so you could keep a tally but yeah just a very standard um collectible figures type of um deal In 2011, we saw the release of some webisodes on La Loopsie's YouTube channel, but it wasn't until 2012, the following year, that we got our first movie, The Search for Pillow. In 2012, we also saw the release of Soft Dolls, which, as the name kind of implies, they're softer, more huggable versions of our standard dolls. <laughs> But 18 dolls were released in total, with four series and four dolls each um, throughout 2012. But among the La Loopsie reboot in recent years, soft dolls would make a return in July of 2022 with the two new Color Me dolls that have a soft new plush design. And I know I've said like spin off to kind of refer to a lot of these lines, but I would say this is really the first year we saw an actual spinoff. A whole new spinoff series with different lore, in fact. It's called Lala Oopsies. They had vibrant skin, hair, and outfits, and were a part of a separate universe, as I mentioned before. They lived in Lala Oopsie Land, unlike the regular Lalas who live in Lala Loopsie Land. This line gave us many different hybrids, which I don't know if that's the correct word, but that's how I'm gonna describe it, because these lines were all a part of the Lala Oopsie um, universe. There were Princess Ballerinas, Anise, Juniper, Lavender, Nutmeg, Saffron, and Sesame. Then the fairies were introduced with characters like Daffodil, Fern, Lilac, and Tulip. These were essentially um, this line's version of the Littles, which we talked about earlier. We also got Mermaids, Anemone, Finn, Gilly, Kelp, Opal, Tadpole, Treasure, and Water Lily. And finally, there were Ponies, Hazelnut, Macadamia, Tea Biscuit, Scone, and Almond. But these weren't like released until the following year, although they are still a part of that universe. The horses are like so special and like near and dear to my heart because they are really the only Lala Loopsie stuff I've been able to find in the attic from my childhood. The two I have specifically are um, Tea Biscuit and Almond. And I think growing up, I didn't even realize these were Lala Loopsies because when you think of Lala Loopsies, you just think of the dolls. But it was so cool to find them because I have a video um, of me playing with them from when I was little. But yeah, I know this line has a lot going on. That was an information overload. And to add on to all it has going on, there was even a distinct onion smell when these dolls first released. And here's a couple parent reviews to get an idea of what I mean. They were infamously on Amazon, but unfortunately it seems the listing no longer exists. Or at least I couldn't find it when I tried. I'm feeling a bit disappointed. I just bought this doll today, and for some reason the doll has an awful onion smell. I started opening it, though it was in the box, but as soon as my daughter started playing with it, my hands and my daughter's hands smelled like onion. I tried cleaning the doll, washing her, putting bleach, and washing the little dress, but nothing yet. 
I do not know what to do. I feel so disappointed. We bought Odd, the Princess Annie's doll, for her seventh birthday yesterday. And all day yesterday and today, I was searching for a random rancid stench in our upstairs, mainly her room. I thought she had dropped food in her room or that her herself was the cause of the smell. I finally figured out that it's the doll, particularly her legs. They reek of B.O. slash onions and it's so nasty, so bad that her whole room stink. Poor Dee Dee is so sad that we have to return the doll. It was a total dud gift. She has other Lala Loopsies and Lala Oopsies and they've all been fine. I searched online and apparently all these new ones, Nutmeg, Juniper, Anais, Saffron, all have this problem. So I'd recommend not buying these dolls as the replacements people are getting also stink. We're going to trade it in for a regular Lala Loopsie and call it a day. I bought Princess Nutmeg a month ago and she smells fine, but I just got Princess Anais yesterday and she smells like onions. It's it stinks so bad that I have to put the doll outside. It was making the house smell. And I guess it depends on when they made the doll. They probably had a very bad batch of dolls that made it to stores. I contacted the company and hopefully they'll replace it with one that doesn't stink. We also saw the release of Harmony B Sharp, who was like a specialty silly hair in a way. Basically, she has multiple pieces of hair that can be attached to her head and they could be like interchanged out and stuff. But the gimmick with her was really the hair pieces could spin around. She's kind of like the Lollipsy equivalent to Harmony the Dancing Dog. But moving on to 2013, we saw the addition of many, many new characters. The ones that came out this year included Scoops Alice. April Sunsplash, Cloud E Sky, Haley Galaxy, Mint E Stripes, Confetti Carnival, Teddy Honey Pots, Little Bash Sheep, Winter Snowflake, and Peggy Seven Seas. They also did a commercial with these dolls that was set to like Gangnam Style, and it's honestly the most like 2010s-esque thing I've seen in recent times. La la Lucy time! We are la la Lucy! We are super cute! By recent times, I mean like that I've rewatched from my childhood and been like, oh my god, this is 2010. That sounded like I was saying it was like remade today. Like, no, this is from 2010. 2013, I mean the 2010s. In 2013, there was also a Wizard of Oz line of minis, which I wanted to highlight because it's super cool on its own. But why I'm mostly mentioning it is because this is when the house packaging officially got the boot, which is really a shame because I think it was really cool and, you know, I always appreciate this in my toy, like, I guess, retrospectives, you could call it, deep dives, where I love the attention to detail that they have, even if the kids, you know, purchasing the toys, like me, you know, overlooked it as a kid and didn't notice it till now. But at the same time, I can kind of see how, like, it would be hard for that to stay intact like as you're unpackaging um, the dolls. As I said earlier, we also saw the end of Silly Hair this year and the introduction of Loopy Hair. Loopy Hair is kind of like the glow up version of Silly Hair. It's honestly my personal favorite out of like the hair variant dolls in general, which we'll kind of see as we travel through the years. Um, but instead of hard plastic coils, we got like yarned hair dolls essentially, like the typical practice of rag dolls. I'm honestly here for it considering it's going back to their roots and you know they're based off rag dolls. This year was also a big year for like animal based spin off lines with Lala Loopsie for some reason. Hold your horses! Like we had the Lala Loopsie ponies, which as a kid I only ever had crumbs in the large dolls, but I specifically had the Lala Oopsie ponies, which was a subsection of the Lala Oopsie line that released the previous year. But, anyways, the Lala Oopsie ponies were. Target exclusive with many different types, ranging from specific character themes, colors, sizes, even light ups. There are also plush Lollipsy ponies, which are way cuter in my opinion, with their little yarn manes. I'm an adult with money. Don't tempt me with a good time because I will do it. The next animal related line, or technically another Littles line, was the Pet Pals. This line included eight characters of like different animals and were, you guessed it, based on the pets of the La Loopsies. Unlike um, the ponies who were just ponies for the sake of being ponies, no correlation. Yes guys, kids love animals, more specifically, girls love ponies. 
I'm sorry, but these look so cursed to me, like seeing the pets with a little body. And for some reason, the heads kind of remind me of like Zoo Pals. Now, obviously, MGA had to hop on the customization doll trend as well. So with this year, we also were introduced to the La Loopsie Workshop. I swear, every doll line like I've talked about has some ripoff of creating a monster, but I've gotta say, for it being a ripoff, Bratzilla's is definitely by far the one who did it best, which is also MGA. Shade aside, this was a spinoff line that allows um, complete customization of the dolls uh, from deciding which pieces to attach, like which hair to use, or you know, whatever in between. Workshop dolls allow you to mix and match parts from other dolls also and create many different combinations. I also need to answer the question that you didn't even know you had. The littles were not enough because we also have the babies. Diaper surprise! La la loopsie diaper surprise! Feed your babies water! Press your tummy, now look inside! Diaper surprise! They had soft bodies and they each came with like a bottle shaped like their pet and a hat that matches their like personality. The characters each had specific patterns like printed on their bodies and even a unique sewed in um, date stamped on their tush. So basically the baby alive of the La Loopsie franchise that happens to have a cutie mark. But that's not why this year is important. No, no, no. This was the year we saw Nickelodeon's um, animated series on La Loopsie, or it was actually on Nick Jr. It featured our favorite ragdoll characters from the doll line, but also, you know, a variety of other characters who got their own special roles and own episodes. Because of the show, MGA also re-released the main eight in stores. And can I just say these TV style boxes are so cool. The series was quite similar successful actually and you know it was a great marketing strategy on MGA's part but it's not anything too special it's not like it hasn't been done before the series ran from March 29th 2013 until September 14th 2015 with two whole seasons In typical La Lipsy fashion, this year we also saw the releases of a ton of new characters, of course, including Cherry Crisp Crust, Mary Golden Petals. You do not have to tell me. I meant to say Mari, and I. Ugh. Also, when I mentioned Dottie Gale wins, I said Dottie Gale wins a lot, even though the previous doll's last name also had, I think it spells a lot. So I don't know why my dyslexia. So I just cut me saying her name entirely, so I'm gonna put it here. I had to refilm this specific segment of me saying these dolls' names at the end of the video, like after I finished filming everything else, because I just couldn't get it right the first time, and then I just never refilmed it when I was like, knowingly as I went through the rest of the script, I was like, why didn't I refilm that? I literally did it wrong. Smile E Wishes, Yuki Komodo, Candle Slice O Cake, Frost I C Cone. Rosebud Longstem, Star Magic Spells a Lot, is actually clearly a Dorothy inspired doll, Queenie Red Heart, Sweetie Candy Ribbon, Toasty Fluff and Stuff, Fancy Frost and Glaze, and Furry Girls a Lot. Yeah guys, I wonder who my favorite is. The day I'm able to find Furry Girls a Lot for a good price will be a day in history for the Lulu Lipsy channel. <laughs> but the biggest part of 2014 I do want to highlight is the La Lipsy Girls spinoff, which was a spinoff released in 2014. Well, yes! Okay. This is another, like, thing that it's in the subsection of, like, Lala Oopsie, where it's different lore. They're basically your favorite Lala Oopsie characters now all grown up. The storyline is the girls embark on an adventurous and magical year at Lala Oopsie Academy for the Learning Arts, aka Lala Prep. As we can tell, this is obviously MGA's attempt at like a fashion doll line with the girls being in high school now, that type of appeal. But it seems as if MGA has discontinued the La Loopsie girls. Um, no new products have been released since 2015, and the former web address also redirects to the regular La Loopsie website, so no surprises there. The vibe I'm like kind of getting um, as I've researched about this line is the target audience of La Loopsie just wasn't interested in this type of line, which is completely fine. I know firsthand from seeing commercials as a kid, I didn't even care for them either because they're just so drastically different compared to the original dolls. I think the thing with Lala Oopsie is they were, they different, were different, but they, but they were, different, were different, like, like, I think they were different in a different way to where it didn't stray too far ahead, too far away from the original concept at hand. Also guys, do you remember the micro minis? Well, now they're no more. 
Because in 2014, we were met with the Tinies. You could choose from three packs, 10 packs, or even a play and go house that you could like carry them all in and like play wherever you go. The houses were actually quite cute in my opinion. Like it reminds me a lot of the like retro Polly Pocket ones. We also saw the introduction in 2014 of the Color Me dolls, which I briefly mentioned earlier. On July 17th, 2014, these dolls were announced on the Facebook page for the Christmas in July preview show, but they were only available while supplies lasted. Similarly to the littlest pet shop like Deco Pets, these encouraged like full customization of the dolls through coloring. And not only could the dolls be colored, but their clothes and like pet could be as well. The original Color Me dolls um, also come with a heart-shaped sponge that allows you to clean off the doll and recolor again and again. But with the reboot of the franchise in 2021, we got new additions um, about a year-ish later from the actual reboot on July 11th, 2022 with the two new Color Me dolls. The dolls Spot, Splatter Splash, and Penny Dots and Blots were released, but this time around they were in the form of soft dolls. Along with being able to color the doll's house um, that comes with like an easel and canvases. And what I like about these is they're since they're soft dolls, they can be like washed in the washing machine when they get like dirty and stuff, unlike before where it was like a sponge, I guess. So I definitely think it's like more practical in that way this time around. The last kind of specialty line we saw this year was the Silly Singers. They basically sing and dance when you like press on their tummy. It's just, it's almost, just almost like, like nothing, nothing comes, comes to, to mind. mind. Okay, but ironically, um, I actually had no idea these were also produced by Mattel. How ironic. Each sings um, her very own musical variation of the mini La Loopsie commercial jingle with lyrics about herself. And the line initially released in January 2014 as a set of four and features four out of the eight original Lollaloopsies, which were Crumbs, Pillow, Jewels, and Peanut. In late 2014, early 2015, the new minis were also released, but here's where things really start to go downhill with this line. The house packaging was removed altogether. <laughs> And the name was changed to Lala Loopsie Minis, which kinda is what I remember them as anyway. I think that arrangement to the name makes more sense personally, but it definitely disappointed a lot of people, and I can kinda see why, with the changes being like so drastic and sudden. At this point, you know the drill. Dolls of 2015 Speedrun! Charm 7 Carryat, Mona Archwings, Bluebell Dewdrop, Alger Leaps and Bounds, Fluffy Pounce Paws, Whistle Kick and Score, Royal Tea Honey Stripes, Cherry Prim and Proper, Keys Sharp and Flats, and Strings Pick and Strum. But in 2015, we saw the introduction to not only new dolls, but some redesigns of the core four main original dolls um, with the Super Silly Tea Party line. This line included characters like Peanut, Mittens, Crumbs, and Jewels. And of course, they were able to milk this by throwing in some little versions in the mix. We also got some stretchy hair dolls, um, more specifically Whirly Stretchy Locks, who is most, most notably, notably the stretchiest, the stretchiest resident, resident of, of Lala Loopsie Lala. Land. She's super creative and loves to express herself with her sweet style. One of her favorite things to do is stretch her hair out as far as it will go and then roll, twist, and curl it into an all new style. Her name comes from the whirls um, on her candy hair, plus the fact that she loves to stretch her locks. Um, can you tell that I couldn't find a lot of information on this doll? Let's see stretchy hair, you can stretch it out to there. Greater twist, stretch and then also, fun fact, her birthday is July 20th, which is Lollipop Day, and I just think that's adorable. I'm kind of like a sucker <laughs> for attention to detail with toys, what can I say? Moving on to 2016 already, um, see, the 2016 dolls were very limited. If you thought that was limited, this is, like, sparse. There's only three dolls in total that were released in 2016, most prevalent being uh, we saw Bubblegum Smack and Pop and Cake Dunkin' Crumble, who were older characters from the Minis line, finally being released in, like, bigger regular doll form. And we also saw Watermelly Seeds that was released. 
The big thing we saw this year really was a lot of minis being released, um, for the most part, but the ones I'm going to highlight um, are the style swap-in minis. Unlike the previous minis, you could swap out these figures' hair, shoes, and clothing since like they were detachable and stuck to the figures, kind of like, I think, by being magnetic. That's what seems most plausible to me, so that's what I'm going to say. I couldn't find a direct description for these guys, so honestly, take it with a grain of salt. We also, unfortunately, had our last um, large standard doll classic release, which was actually Pillow Feather Bed. Ironically, the last doll released was also the first doll ever released. I don't know, kind of iconic if you ask me. Oh, and yeah, she's wearing some like new pajama set, I think, too. But with that, the next year in 2017, We're we moved on from what we all knew and loved so dearly, and we got the new La La Loopsie reboot. This era is not fondly remembered from what I could see, and similar to 2016, you can see the shift in quality. Like, the mini blind boxes they did were literally just the old minis that had been out, but like repainted in a can. Come on, MGA. I know you can do better than that. Or honestly, or honestly can you? <laughs> from what I could see in the brief research I did online, the show, um, however, was somewhat fondly remembered. Like, personally, I have never seen it, or I didn't really realize it was a like a different era. I just assumed they were kind of connected up until like, maybe until like a year or two ago. But I do really like Stormy Sky. Um, that's the only doll I have currently, which I thrifted and is in pretty great condition for like it, her being thrifted. Plus, I got a mini of her for my birthday, like coincidentally. Anyway, the dolls this time around, um, the characters had hair, but it was not like yarn or like hard, like it was actually like doll, typical doll hair, like Barbie hair. We also got um, some style and swap box sets, um, but after that it was truly really it for Lala Loopsy. You thought it was over. Until 2021! <laughs> In August, to be specific, in honor of La Loopsie's 10th anniversary, we saw so many re-releases, including Crumbs, Dot, Mittens, Jewels, Pixie, Cloud, Sweetie, and a classic version of Storm E, but sisters of Dot, Sweetie, and Storm E's were like all new, along with Candle Slash Wishes and the new sisters Crumpet and Teacup. Most surprisingly, April and Scoops were both given silly hair dolls. Along with this new era and the dolls came a YouTube series called Let's Create, which featured Lala Loopsie inspired crafts, and there haven't really been any new released in 2023 from what I was able to find, but you can still find them in stores, and Lala Loopsie is very much still around, here to stay, and no longer a forgotten relic of the past. Well, that's all I have to talk about today. I hope you guys really enjoyed. This topic was very fun to delve into considering it's what I made my username like based on just because of a pun, but I genuinely have a lot of appreciation for this line regardless of how much it was immersed in my childhood. Let me know in the comments if you used to collect Lala Loopsie or what kind of memories you have associated with them. And to end the video out, here's the unboxing of the minis I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Welcome to unboxing. Boxing. I'm actually really, I was kind of debating, I was like, do I want to just hang this on my wall? But it has like the sticker of the price at the thrift store, so I want to try to keep the little background intact, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, guys. Now, it would really suck if my mic wasn't working right now. This video goes in chronological order because I'm filming this literally after I filmed everything else. This feels like someone put it back together, but it doesn't look like it was like messed with. Like it, it's literally brand new. I want to make sure you guys can see me unboxing it. It's kind of hard to multitask. Wait, I actually think I might have preserved it pretty well. Oh gosh. Oh my, oh my gosh, I did it. Why is that sound so sarcastic? Me casually making sure my green screen is gonna work. Yeah, this is like the little pop-up place. That's basically what I meant. So these, let me do it like this. <laughs> Wait, these are the dolls. Hopefully you can see them. I don't wanna mess up my green screen too much. So I'm gonna just show y'all from here. Let's pop out Peanut first. I don't wanna break the doll. Oh my god, what if I jinx it? That would be so not funny. I mean, yeah. oh my god, she comes with a pie. 
Oh my god, that's everything. I'm never saying that's everything again. I literally was getting like flashbacks to Shane Dawson. Oh my gosh. And there's like a little balloon animal. You know, if the green screen is not doing its full job, then that's okay. This is supposed to be the chill, funny, real moment of the video. Oh my gosh. The little pet is a little elephant. I'm reminded that this camera, I'm reminded that this camera just has such good focus. You know, watch that I, my green, or my, what am I what talking am I about? Watch that my um, ring light needs to be turned on more, but like, do I want to? Not really. I think it would be kind of camp if this was just a really bad green, green screen and that was how I ended this video after like I'm gonna edit everything, like try to be professional. Oh my gosh, guys, her head's a little squish squish. Okay, let me just detach. Now this is what I mean guys. Now this is what I mean guys. So ignore all the accessories. I could put them in here and it's... Like, hey, Ember. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, don't fall. Ta da. I don't care if you can see my green screen right now. This is actually like really cute. It's kind of, I didn't think it was going to stay intact. And then this is just the back of the box. You know, I was all debating about like not unboxing them for the sake of wanting to hang this on my wall. I can just hang this on my wall. If I end up hanging this on my wall, I'll insert a photo, but that was my, um, unboxing. If you like this video, subscribe to the, let me do the Grayson's Project outro. If you like this video, subscribe to the Video Maker. Um, they all, they all, yeah, everything almost just fell out as I did that. I'll see you guys in my next video.